This is an Udo Puko from a YouTube maker. His channel is down in the description. That's his interpretation of a Puko, which is a very particular style knife. What exactly defines a Puko is always of some debate. Uh, this is made from essentially a kit or a knife blank, which he does a few modifications to. One of the more interesting ones is the way he makes the handle. This is one example. He does a few other styles of construction. But it's basically a cord wrap handle, which is epoxy dipped or coated. A lot of people do epoxy coated um, paracord or cord handles, but that's what they are. It's just essentially that the paracord is coated or dipped and then wrapped, and you get that look and feel of a cord wrap, which has been protected by the epoxy. But in this case, it's a solid fill material as the epoxy is repeatedly dipped and then it's buffed. It's quite interesting. And one of the first things I thought when I saw the videos is, man, that's going to be fairly useless as a knife handle because it's going to be so slick and slippery. But I was completely wrong. It's actually not. It is very smooth and comfortable, but as soon as you exert pressure on it, you start to uh, stick into it or you have very good grip rather. So it's not really an issue in regards to security. Now, I wouldn't want to be doing work on really large fish and stuff like that because it doesn't have a significant guard in front and it doesn't have that level of retention, but for normal work, haven't found it to be an issue. Now, I've been doing some significant woodwork with it uh, lately and I want to talk a little bit just about the grip. I've carved a fair amount of wood with it. The performance is, as you would expect, very good for shallow wood cutting because of course it has that roughly 10 degree per side bevel so it cuts in at a very low angle and continues to cut very well. Uh, so you can use it even with light pinch grips and it still cuts wood uh, effectively. A couple of things that I was concerned about, the first one was what was the limitation of essentially a three fingered grip. Your pinky really can't get on the blade. That does limit the amount of force that you can uh, apply to the blade. While you may not think about it, you essentially put push forward with your thumb and index finger and you pull back with your pinky to actually stabilize the knife in your hand. And if you want to see how dramatic an effect that makes, if you try to cut just by holding the knife with your thumb and index finger, you'll notice that it immediately rotates back because you've got nothing to stabilize the handle from going ahead. And that's essentially what your other fingers do keep the handle from rotating ahead. And the longer your grip, or the longer the distance between these two points, the bigger your lever arm, the bigger your torque, so it's much easier to stabilize the handle. So that's why, again, this is near impossible, this is difficult, this starts to become usable, and a full four-fingered grip gives you maximum cutting ability. But now keep in mind, this is obviously not meant to be a full sort of replacement for a full size knife. This is a neck knife and I've been using it for pocket carry and it works uh, wonderful. It's very nice. I haven't carried pocket fixed blades uh, in a while. And this makes an excellent conversation piece because of the colors and the nature of the handle. And you can talk to people who are not that much into knives. It makes them curious and that's always a nice thing to do. But mainly I've been exploring what would I need to do to want sort of a bit more grip than this. And what I found essentially is I really need to cut a lot of wood. Like if I cut say a thousand slices, I'd sort of want the full four fingered grip because I can sort of feel fatigue issues and stuff coming into play with, like I said, around that volume with a three finger grip. But again, thinking about it, that's a large amount of work. So making a few shavings for a fire, doing slight carving projects and stuff like that, it's not an issue. It's just long term continuous use. I'd want to be able to get my pinky on there. Uh, in regards to general comfort, uh, there's a few things that uh, could be improved. The end of the handle got a couple of rough spots where it's not exactly nice and smoothly finished. And because the handle is enclosed, actually inside your hand, when that makes contact, it is a bit abrasive. But again, for smaller volumes of work, you're really not going to notice that. You can take this, you know, cut off some bark off a tree or something, not going to be a big issue. But again, for extended work, it starts to get abrasive down in this area. The transition from the grip to the blade is relatively squarish and sort of unfinished all in this area. 
Uh, you notice that when you're doing pinch grips, holding it up like this. Again, these are all sort of squarish and not fully rounded like the rest of the handle. So you do feel them being a bit abrasive. The choil area right here is very squarish, not chamfered at all. So again, when you're doing close up work on the blade, you do find that to be a bit abrasive. Uh, this is easily fixed within maybe five to 10 minutes uh, with some sandpaper if you didn't want to take it all the way up to uh, buffing it, which is what I'm going to do. So I'll just round out the handle here. I'll round out uh, this choil right here and I'll round out these areas uh, right here. And that'll get me back uh, to where the grip is. The only other thing that I've noticed is, and I was curious about this for a while, uh, Kali Harris does this, Fred Perrin does this, a number of other people uh, do it. They use dramatically different uh, widths in this area than they do in the handle right here. And one of the interesting things this can do is give you a drop blade profile. It's a sort of pseudo guard. And that can be nice because it allows you to work closer to a cutting board and it gives you some security in penetration stabs and that type of work. What I was curious of is could you maintain a hammer grip in it and I found that I really can't. Uh, the problem is this is too narrow and when I do a hammer grip for power cutting I'm not actually making contact at all with my index finger. So you can't get the power immediately when I go to push forward the blade is sort of sloppy in this area because I can't get tight up here. You can see there's a looseness right around this spot because again I don't have that width but again this isn't a handle that's designed for a hammer grip it's designed for more up close precision type work because it is a smaller precision type blade that's not meaning that this is a bad handle design it was just something I was curious uh, about so overall very innovative handle design he's done a number of things to the blade which are very positive it's a fully rounded spine, and I don't mean chamfered, I mean fully rounded, as in rounded the same way Chris Reeve does it. It's a full round. It's extremely comfortable. Uh, the blade is bluid, which essentially is your darker form of rust, which is relatively stable compared to your orange form uh, of rust, because the orange form of rust or iron oxide increases in volume. It gets bigger when it forms. So as it gets bigger, it pushes off the other rust and steel that's around it, whereas the black oxide doesn't. So it forms a relatively stable uh, coating. So overall, really enjoying this, and it gets me back to using small fixed blades for pocket carry, which I've been meaning to do for quite some time. Like I've been meaning to do a lot of things. And again, very positive. Uh, very few people react to this in sort of a weapon printing type manner. Most people are very curious. They look at the handle, ask uh, how that's done. And of course, because the edge angle is relatively low, uh, they cut um, very well. So people are very positive about the sharpness and the cutting ability if you give it to them to use. And the other thing, of course, is that it isn't an extremely thin blade. So you would have no problem, for example, prying some drywall out from around screws, popping off a piece of strapping, um, taking off heavy construction staples, cutting through very thick pallet material, that kind of stuff, and webbing uh, with no concerns. And that's one of the reasons that I've actually been carrying this as sort of a backup to the Havilon Peranta, which uses disposable scalpel blades. And I've been using this for pure cutting only. When you're not having to do any twisting or plying, but just slitting type material, this works very well. But it doesn't take very much in terms of lateral uh, force to move this blade around because it's only half a millimeter or 20 thousandths thick. So even a relatively thick uh, staple through some cardboard is beyond the ability of this blade uh, to pry out unless you get rather uh, innovative with it and pry through the width instead of the thickness which takes a bit of doing but in most cases with this blade if you had to do heavier work you use the knife to make a tool to do the work like for example I use this to make a bark spud when I wanted to get some very thick uh, and resin impregnated spruce bark to start a fire and serve as a bit of a candle uh, a couple of days ago but with the uh, Udo Puko you'd simply take the knife slit down the tree rather powerfully Put the blade in behind it and just pry the bark off absolutely trivially you're not going to do anything to the blade you can't do that with the Havilon Peranta you'd simply snap the blade off so 
again proving to be very nice and as a backup to the Havilland Pronto which offers much more durability but still can compete in terms of fine cutting ability for a lot of work uh, not printing as a weapon very much uh, just very positive comments from m many people who look at it who handle it and see it as a curiosity haven't seen a type of handle before doesn't come off as very threatening and again, just some minor issues with the blade, which could uh, improve comfort for extended cutting on the order of like doing a thousand cuts through some wood, making a pile of shavings or extended shapings, uh, that kind of work. There's a tremendous amount of misinformation about the performance of single bevel knives. And it comes from people comparing things which are drastically different and assuming that the performance difference is due to the single bevel when it's not. So as an example, someone takes a knife like this, this is the Buck Hoodlum, and compares it to uh, a single bevel knife, cuts some wood, and they find that the single bevel knife cuts much better, and they say, well, that's why you use single bevels versus your dual bevel grind. That's not what's happening. Essentially, the final grind on the Buck Hoodlum and many of the tactical survival type knives can have a very high angle. Uh, this can easily go up to 20 to 30 degrees per side. The angle on single bevel knives generally floats at around 10. So because the angle is much lower, it bites into the wood at a much lower angle to the wood and it also cuts in much lower because essentially it's a shallower wedge. So it has a higher mechanical advantage. So if you wanted to have the buck hoodlum cut at that level, all you do is you modify the edge angle and you take it down to whatever angle you want or generally what I prefer to do is take the primary grind down and leave the edge uh, significantly thinner in the first couple of inches and I've talked about that in other videos. There's a guy on Rec.Knives which is a Usenet use group uh, who was comparing this which is the Mora 2000 against a, uh, a bunch of other really uh, expensive compared to this knives and finding that this simply did better in quite a number of applications. And one of the knives he specifically compared it against was a cold steel recon scout and a number of other cold steel blades and the performance was much higher. Now again, he didn't attribute it to the fact that this had a single bevel. He attributed it to the fact that the steel stock was much thinner and that the angle of the edge was much lower. So then he took a bunch of the cold steel knives, the recon scout, master hunter and some of the other ones and lowered the apex bevel down to match to get the performance of this now of course you still can't match the performance of the very thin blade stock if you have a much uh, heavier blade and the primary grind doesn't take that into account but it's interesting to me about how much that's been distorted over the years and again people focus on the single bevel and not the angle and you've seen this knife has actually been sharpened that much that I had to re-grind down in the choil area to uh, flatten it out and I might eventually at some point add in a very small sharpening notch or choil down there to prevent that sort of wear recurve that you get uh, in these blades which I find annoying. Now the real advantage of uh, a dual grind is that what it allows you to do is set the angle, the final angle of the edge at the minimum that you need for durability right at the edge and then alter the angle up here on the primary grind to reduce that down even less because you don't need to carry that angle all the way up because essentially the forces are concentrated at the edge so you need a higher angle down here than you do up on the primary grind. So a multi-bevel grind gives you a much higher durability cutting ability combination. Now, of course, you had to do this correctly. You can easily end up with an edge angle that's too high down here. It doesn't cut well, but you can thin out the primary grind too much and the edge blows apart. So in that case, dual or multi-bevel grinds take a bit more thought, but if you do them correctly, they allow more versatility. The problem is with single bevel grinds, and this is an example of it, which a lot of people have been talking about lately. This is an extreme single bevel grind. Uh, which tries to give you the maximum level of cutting ability. But what you end up with is an edge angle of around 5 degrees per side, uh, which some people are complaining about in terms of durability. Now, as I talked about in other videos, I think one of the main problems that they're having 
is overheating of the edge and not inherently the fact that the edge is as weak as people claim because there's no problem uh, using this for woodworking as long as it's sharpened properly and the damaged metal has been removed. And this has currently no micro bevel. It's at a true five degree uh, bevel. Uh, but the solution to this that was proposed, of course, was put a secondary micro bevel on it. And again, that gets back to the advantage of multifaceted or multi compound grinds. They give you more versatility in solution. And this is an example of doing that. This is a bush buddy from Condor that originally started out with a bevel very similar to this. This is my much I uh, used uh, number 1260 Mora. So the Condor had a single bevel, but they didn't really do a good implementation of that. The angle of the single bevel was really high on some of the early Condors. It was between 20 to 30 degrees per side, and some of them were even higher. So you can imagine a 30 degree per side bevel gives you a 60 degree included bevel. So you essentially just got a wedge so what I did basically was put a full flat grind on the blade and the very, very edge is kept at the same angle that's on the single bevel grind. So of course this knife cuts much better, less force is required, higher efficiency. And the interesting thing is if I wanted to, there's no real reason, but I could put a very slight 15 degree bevel on the edge of this. And in that case, the durability of this would be much higher than this one at the edge bevel, but it would still cut much better because of the higher primary grind. And again, what you have to be very careful with, say if I went all the way up and put, say, a 20 degree bevel on the very edge, at that point, the knife starts getting to be durable enough that you could use it to do heavy bone cutting and similar. But now, because the primary grind has thinned the edge so much, you've made the edge more durable than the primary grind can support, and you could actually break pieces right out of the knife. So that's where you had to find a balance between the edge durability and the durability of the blade.